Okay, so here is the finished line work. Uh, so this is the end of stage two. This is what stage two looks like. It's basically just a linear drawing. Uh, you've got all your lines mapped out onto the page. And you've also got some dark lines, some soft lines. And, you know, as I said in the previous section, it's really good to have soft lines for those kind of soft tonal transitions, like in the face, and then hard, dark lines for those cast shadows. So if you can kind of <clears throat> differentiate the lines a little bit, toning the drawing is going to be much, much easier for you to do. You're going to be able to keep on top of everything. Um, you also want to use soft lines for like the reflected lights. It's so like the bottom of the jaw, for example, here. Those are some really nice soft lines. You got the reflected light of the neck and also the reflected lights of the hair bun. So before I start toning this, let me just kind of uh, describe what I did with the hair here. So there's a lot of detail in this area, you'll notice, okay? And there's actually a reason for that. You see everything back here, if you look at the reference, everything's in shadow and it's a lot of soft reflected light. So throughout, when you're toning the drawing, you are going to have an opportunity to make this area a bit more detailed. But in the linear drawing, you want to just make it a little bit less detailed, okay? You want to focus your attention on this area here when it comes to drawing the details because this is the transition between light and dark, okay? It's that border between light and shadow. And so you need to prioritize this area more than here and more than here, okay? So there's a lot of cast shadows going on here. Um, everything back here is just soft reflected light. And as, as you're turning the drawing, you're gonna have an opportunity to actually make those a bit detailed anyway. So in the linear drawing, just make sure that this is less detailed and a bit more detailed on the border between light and shade right there. Uh, and that's a pretty successful linear drawing. I mean, that's kind of a work of art in itself, really. You could just leave it at that stage. And, and that's kind of the trick to constructive drawing is that each stage needs to look like a finished drawing. Like you could just walk away from the drawing at any point of the drawing process and it's gonna look like a finished drawing. That's kind of the beauty of it. So we're gonna start toning this thing in now. And we're going to use hatching strokes to shade it in. So you're just hatching one line on top of the other. It's a very tedious process, but with practice, it's a bit quicker. I'm just using a 2B pencil. I've been using this pencil the whole time. And uh, <clears throat> to begin with, I'm, I'm really just focusing on that border between light and shadow. So I'm not really going to start toning any of this in yet. I'm just going to use very gentle hatching strokes just to kind of map in some of those tones. So I'm just coming in on the diagonal and just kind of using the weight of the pencil. I'm not putting much pressure on the pencil at this point. And I'm having a look at my reference and I'm just kind of trying to see where those shadows should be falling. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so that's a shadow shape in there. So it is very easy to get lost in some of these details. So that's why you want to study the reference very carefully. to make sure that you're on the right track. And you can see as I get, as I move away from that border between light and shadow, you can see my hatching strokes get more and more spaced out. They get lighter and there's less of them. So I'm really just focusing on this area here. And you can draw in the rest of your shadow shapes 
as you progress through the drawing. So if you're missing anything, sometimes it helps to start toning the drawing and then you can kind of see what shadow shapes need to be drawn in afterwards. That one there, that's in shadow. And you're still keeping your strokes light enough so that you can change some of these shapes if necessary. So now what I'm doing, just wait for that truck to go by first. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm kind of just going over what I've hatched and I'm just shading that border between light and shadow a bit more. And this is going to strengthen some of those tones in the foreground. I'm still doing it very lightly. I don't want to go too dark. Now I'm trying to just kind of detail some of those shadows in the hair. Again, just very lightly. So you can see like this hair strand tucks under the one above it here. So there's gonna be like a bit of a dark niche in that bend. And then here where these light lines I've drawn, that's the reflected light on that hair strand. So I don't really wanna go into that. So just try to remember which lines mean what. And in that way, you can have much more control over your drawings. So like this area here is like a reflected light of this hair strand. So I'm gonna darken everything above that. And again, like this takes practice. I, I used to I used to be shit at drawing this sort of stuff when I first started. It was really, really hard. But it's just one of those things where the more you do it, the better you're gonna get. Now I'm sort of darkening this bit where 
this. And the roads are busy today. Okay, so this part of the hair strand tucks underneath this one. So again, I'm just gonna darken that area. And then you can kind of see <coughs> that three dimensional effect coming through. And just take your time. You know, it's not a race. Take your time, try to understand the forms as much as you can. And keep your strokes light as you do this. Don't, don't go straight for the dark tones because you're gonna make a mess of the drawing, you're gonna make a mess of the line work. And all of that hard work setting up the line work is gonna be all for nothing. So now I'm just going to move on to the shadows on the face. A bit of a cast shadow on that top eyelid that I forgot to draw. So I'm going to draw that in now. And just kind of shade that in very carefully. And again, just using gentle hatching strokes in these areas. I don't need to go too dark on those just yet. Same with the nose. There's the lip there. And shading in underneath the bottom lip. And because I've kind of mapped out some of these shadows already, uh, in the linear drawing, I don't really need to look at the reference half the time, especially with these forms. I can kind of just already understand what's going on there. So just a few light strokes traveling in the direction of the contour. Same down here. You can see how I'm really gently building these tones up along the edge of the face because this is a soft transition from light into dark. You can see how my hatching strokes are traveling in the direction of the contours of the face. So this part comes down like that. That's the plane there. This one comes down like pretty much vertically. That comes back on the angle. And then that one is a bit more tilted like that. And that's how I shade that part in. And that's all I gotta do. I don't need to darken that any further. That can just stay as it is. So I am gonna come in underneath it and just kind of tone this cast shadow of the neck but here's what I want you to do, is as these tones travel away from the face, I want you to make them appear lighter. So you will see that everything in the center is kind of a bit darker in terms of tone. And then as it moves away from the face, I want those tones to gradually get lighter. So even though this is a cast shadow, you can see how dark that shadow is in the reference, but in my drawing, I'm giving it very, very light hatching strokes. Because that's how you make the drawing sit a bit better on a white sheet of paper. It, it, it should have the appearance of kind of like disappearing into fog, if that makes sense. too much time in that area. Uh, we can come in and do the same on the hair bun, just some extremely light shading back here. Don't have to be too precise about this. Just 
kind of make it a little bit darker where it's closest towards the head and then lighter around this region. Okay, and that's looking pretty cool. So now I'm gonna come in and just shave this part just because I want it to be even darker. So just remember that shading is going to darken the drawing very quickly. So you really want to be careful with that. But as you can see, you do get a nice soft gradient effect when you do that. But you'll always have the ultimate control over your tones if you're just hatching them in. So I tend to go back and forth between shading and hatching. I think shading is good if you just want to establish the tones very quickly in the drawing. Like you just want to get them on the page and you know exactly what you're doing, then you can use shading. But otherwise, you can just hatch them in if you want to have the, the uh, ultimate control over the image. I'm just shading in that other hair strap at the back there. Oops, it's a bit windy today, okay. And I'm also shading in the strap at the front. I can just see my line work here. So that really soft line, that's kind of where the reflected light begins. So I'm, I'm just gonna stop right there. Just let that kind of fizzle out. <clears throat> okay, so that's basically stage three of the drawing is just kind of mapping in very lightly where the main tones are gonna go. And it looks pretty good in this stage. I mean, there's definitely things I could tweak, but I could definitely walk away from this drawing like right now and I could just leave this as a finished drawing. I definitely want to come in here and detail some of these parts of the head a little bit more. Especially with the hair strands, like they could definitely do with a bit more care and attention. But I just want you to understand how quickly it is actually to do a drawing like this. So I think it's been a couple of hours so far, which really isn't a long time in the grand scheme of things. And so long as you're gradually just kind of building the drawing up, paying attention to where those turns are going, you can get very good results very quickly. I'm kind of happy to leave this drawing right there. I'm going to continue it. I'm going to finish this off, but I wouldn't mind actually in the next drawing that I do just, just to do a drawing like this because I love this stage of the drawing process where it's like you can still see the line work and all the construction. There's a bit of a cast shadow there. So I'm just going to sketch that in and then just gently shape that in there. Yeah, I could easily just leave this drawing in this stage, I think. Absolutely. kind of strengthen the edge on that chin there since that's quite a sharp turn. And then the shadowing on the cheek should be a little bit softer. So I'm just gonna kind of go into the lights just very slightly. And typically I, I refrain from turning the lights until 
much later on in the drawing process. Like my attention is usually just on the shadow shapes for the most part. Um, and I know a lot of people say don't smudge your drawings and I agree for the most part. I really do think you should try to refrain from smudging too much. But I'm just kind of smudging where it's meant to be a soft transition on the side of the face there. Everything else I won't touch, but that part, I really want to soften that off. So it's not so much smudging that's the problem, it's just kind of how and where you do it. But generally, yeah, don't, don't smudge your drawings, because that's, that's a really bad habit. I'm going to do some like really almost invisible strokes on the, along the neck here. Just so I can separate this plane of the jawline from the neck. And it's barely visible, but it's there. And it, and it does make a bit of a difference. I'm also going to strengthen just this corner of the cast shadow shape at the bottom of the eye there. And then I'm just going to let those tones fade into the tones above it, like that. And uh, maybe same with the nose, we could strengthen where it meets the top lip. Bottom lift is looking pretty good as it is. So yeah, as I said earlier, it's just, it's just a combination of hatching and shading at this stage. And it's a bit of a back and forth, especially in this area of the hair here. And then with this hair strap, I think I might go into the light shapes a bit more. I might just start sketching in some of those half tones just in this region. Just because it is pretty close to shadow, so we may as well get that in there. But there you go, stage three of the drawing process. That's it right there.